we'll do the intro. Oh, there, there I, I'm go. here. Hi. Hey. hey. There's no intro. <laughs> All right. It's been a while since we've live streamed. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to our Hour of Code project, which will not be an hour. It'll be a less than a quarter hour of code. Thank you, Pete. I'm Josh from browndoggadgets.com. Uh, Brown dog gadget. Yeah. Oh, it's been a while since yeah. we've done this. There, uh, there we go. Oh, and to my left is uh, wonderful Pete, Pete, Pete Prodell, sure. um, who's pressing buttons and telling people to follow us on social media. Pressing all the buttons. You're ruining the the surprises, Pete, when you press all the buttons at once. And just I can't, I can't take it. Anyway, right. long story short, we're going to show you how to take a little fun, cheapo battery-powered Christmas light thing and have it run by a micro bit using the power of relays. And code. And code, because this is hour of code. Quarter hour of code. <laughs> One small amount of code. One hour of code. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times. Well, it is the holiday season, and you can find so many different like holiday lighting packages out there. Um, my favorite go-to one as a former teacher for classroom use or home use uh, on small trees or wreaths is a battery-powered, it's just a two AA battery-powered little light setup. These are really easy. I think these are called fairy lights is the official term people use for the setup. These have some, some wonderful little metal uh, snowflakes on them, which jingle jangle all over the place. We bought a couple versions from Target for five to ten dollars you can find them i had like a, I had a set of these like 20 years ago <laughs> I, I used to use they, they, you can find them everywhere and this run off two or three triple a or double a batteries which lasts quite a long time leds typically run off the two a little battery pack this actually has a battery pack with a timer on it pete it's a timer yeah. which i think just lasts for i didn't read the box i probably should it's right here it said like yeah you can read it right there Oh, a box. Um, batteries not included, which I could, this was ten dollars at Target. Oh, six hours on, eighteen hours off. So there you go. It's a built-in timer, which is surprisingly nice. However, let's say you want to do something more fun with a micro bit or an Arduino, but we're going to stick with micro bit because we have a micro bit here. What if you want to actually control them smartly, or at least somewhat smartly? Because you're not going to not going to wire up a ton of NeoPixels, are you, Pete? No. I guess you just get a string of them. But if you have one of these cheapo light sets around, you can easily have them run off a relay because it's a simple DC package. And a relay is just a smart switch. Yeah. Is that the best way to describe it, Pete? Smart it switch? Is. Yeah. It's a computer controlled switch. It turns yeah. something on or off. And right now, these are blinking because our micro bit's just going on for a second, off for a second, over and over and over again. You know what this is, Pete? This is a really expensive way to make a blinking string of lights. It is the classic, like, <laughs> blink sketch that you use when you first use a microcontroller. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. On a <laughs> string of lights. Um, we're well, using... We, we did it ourselves. We did it ourselves, it's true. Pete did it himself. Yeah, right. <laughs> I watched from you, another room. You watched me do it, yeah. <laughs> well, I did other things. Uh, Pete, an hour of Pete. Uh, right. Possibly code. So we're using our, our Crazy Circuits bit board, which is a micro bit compatible breakout board, which has this wonderful little built-in relay right here. Uh, so we can just run things over to a screw terminal. Oh, thanks, Pete, for that wonderful yeah. Crazy Circuits logo, which I forgot. Microbit. Not sponsored by Microbit, but Microbit if you're out there. We love you. We're using your boards. Uh, but we have this broken out. We're using a little battery pack of our own here to uh, run our Microbit, power it off of that. Um, and it's just, the little relay is just saying on and off. So. To wire this up was really, really, really simple because coming off of here, coming off of this battery pack are just two wires. Yeah. It's two wires. Um, so we just uh, took a, it was an X-Acto knife, Pete? I did, yeah. It was an X-Acto knife. Yeah. Uh, we just kind of split down the middle here and then snipped one of these in half and stripped them. Easy to do. If you mess up, you could just, you know, try again. Uh, not too tough. So we have a break in... Who knows? Positive or negative? Who knows? I don't know. We don't know because yeah, we just broke one up. As long as it opens yeah. and closes the circuit, you're good. And we got fancy with the little screw terminal part here we screwed it into, then ran our conductive tape over here. In our crazy circuit system, we use conductive tape. 
on a, a brick-based building environment, brick-based. Um, this here is actually a 3D printed battery holder, which you can find uh, um, files for at browndowgadgets.com along with a bunch of other 3D printed to brick-based environment adapters because we were sick and tired of taping them down. Thanks, Pete. Wow. See, that's flashing on screen because Pete's pushing the button over and over again, not anything fancy. It's... Only I could program it to do it, so I wouldn't have to push the button. Ooh, <laughs> see if I can do it in sync with the flashing light. Anyway, so we have that. It was a standard uh, microbit. This is microbit V2, I think. Is there a touch point on the front? That's no, fine. It's an old one, right? No, it's an old one. It's a V1. On the oh, old school. Old school. <laughs> no, V1.5. There was a V1 before this. Oh, oh yes. Uh, Almost. But anyway, microbit, yay, and just programmed with a very, very simple sketch. Now, the relays are great. There's lots of relays out there for microbit. So if you don't have to use our stuff. There's tons and tons of relays out there for stuff. Um, this is just a simple bit of relay code. This is the only code Pete used um, for this wonderful blink. Blink on, blink off. Now, I know there's a, a Monk Makes has a nice relay, like a little relay board you can alligator clip from your microbit to it. And use that as a, a to control a relay. That's a pretty popular one. Nice little black PCB on that one. Oh, that's an easy thing to do. And that's just in general, just it's a nice thing, easy thing to do for any project with a built-in relay. Um, and then we can show you a couple different options for things you could do to expand this out further. Because just making a string of lights turn on and blink, that's that's not a full hour of code. <laughs> that's that's like a. A solid two minutes of code, Pete. I mean, you probably want to explain this code in great detail, don't you? I mean, forever. If you've forever. done anything microbit, this is pretty... Pete, did you spend a full two minutes on this code? Uh, I mean, if you to take the screenshot and download it. Yeah, uh, I mean, it did add at least another minute worth of code yeah. to this project. Um, so one thing you can do with this to make things a little more fancy, you can use a sensor. Now, our, our Crazy Circuits bit board, the reason we... We put this together and like it so we can have some extra features, but we've got a bunch of pin headers back here. You can see that here, little pin headers. So you can plug in your standard off-the-shelf sensors and other components so that you could add it, like functionality to the micro bit. Um, so my go-to thing is always adding a distance sensor, a little ultrasonic distance sensor, which are anywhere from 3 to $5. They're super common, been around for ages, um, so that when, say, somebody passes it, triggers it, it say would turn the LEDs on for a couple minutes. Basically, a, a motion activated light, <laughs> which which reminds me that's something we should put in our office here, Pete. Motion activated lights. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, hopefully, they work for everybody. Um, they worked great last week. Uh, there you go. Uh, but that's a very simple thing. When that triggers, something happens. There we go. Distance sensor. Yeah. It's a pretty. That's one we sell on our website. They are super common. The one we use is a, just a generic off the shelf one. Um, because they, they're all super common, very well documented. There's great code for it in uh, Microsoft Make Code. If you're doing Arduino-based projects, there are a billion and one Arduino projects out there. Literally a billion, uh, yeah. we counted. Uh, a billion, like billion. Yeah. Yes, 20 is 20 from us. Uh, we do have a nice guide on our website too about how to use the distance sensor with a micro bit, um, but they're not tough to, to use at all. They're very handy and they're very. If you're doing anything micro bit and you have the ability to like use plug-in sensors and whatnot to whatever thing you're using, get one. They're just so handy. But also something we like to do as well, since we have the Microbit V2 is out, and that's kind of the one you can buy everywhere, there's a couple built-in sensors on the Microbit that are actually really useful for, say, running a relay. For instance, you know, the Microbit has, Pete, a built-in light sensor. It oh. actually gets values from the LEDs and right. uses it as a light sensor. So there's no reason to, like, wire in a light-detecting resistor, which we've done. Uh, as projects, you can actually use the built-in light sensor on here to give you a basically a, a light or dark rating. It, it's not a great, uh, it's not a great light sensor, but it's one that works. Yeah. And like, is a room dark? Is a room light? Um, so if you want to say an automatic like a night lights feature, for instance, light goes out, sun goes down, turns something on, really handy. Uh, now imagine this was Microbit V2, which is not. They have a built-in microphone on them, right, Pete? Yeah. They do. Built-in microphone, which means you can make it sound activated. It would turn. You would, you would could do something. Now, there's a couple ways you could do that. I, I always with approach, you want to have something sound reactive. So you can have something that, for loud sound, it turns on. So if somebody gets too loud in the room, the light turns on. 
kind of situation. If you're a classroom teacher, great way of like keep it down, keep That's it down, right. you kids, yeah. and you're probably twenty They're minutes of code. Enthusiastic about school. They're enthusiastic about their ten to fifteen minutes worth of code. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Very enthusiastic. In fact, we actually posted a project the other day, Pete, yeah. where we have a sound reactive animatronic Christmas tree. We posted a pe- little right, little right. peak of that from. Uh, from our workshop area. It's a project and post next week, but it makes a servo turn in reaction to sound, giving a simple animatronic approach. But anyway, the other way you could do it too is by using making a timer. You know, you could just buy a timer from Target, Pete, like one of those little uh, little, little timers you turn, like things turn on, things turn off, plug into AC aspect. Yes. You could do that, or you could go overkill and make your own. That's true. That's right. Make your own clock. Who, who are we? Mr. Rolex? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Timex? Yeah. Rolex <laughs> Those... Timex, I think, was his full name. Really? Uh, yeah. yeah. That explains a lot. <laughs> a lot about that. Uh, so you can easily make make your own uh, like real-time clock setup uh, with a micro bit or an Arduino very, very simply. The problem is most microcontrollers don't have a built-in clock module that keeps accurate time. They're they'll get off really quickly. So what yeah. happens if you unplug the batteries from the microphone? Oh, and that's the thing too. They unplug, you know, lose power and whatnot. So if we unplug this... Oh, your clock's going to reset. It would, but it's no longer displaying time on this one, Pete. It was saying 3 o'clock Let's earlier. Try that. Try oh, it showed us a time that it flipped into nothing. Oh, try pressing the A button. Or maybe one of the wires. Oh, there we go. It showed it. Oh, there we go. Now it's good. Maybe I'll lose power. That time is pretty close. Um, so we're using a very, again, simple real-time clock module. It has a spot for a battery. It's how your, your it's the same way your clocks will keep time. You have a little battery backup on there. Um, same situation. It's great. It keeps time way more accurately than the onboard controller on here. And if you lose time or power, it'll still keep going. And we did this by plugging in, again, to those pin headers on our board, um, a little simple seven-segment display and a real-time clock module. So you could, if you wanted to, instead of, say, buying for like that 10 to $15 range, one of those little little wall adapters, you could spend far, far more by buying a micro bit, if you can find one for 15 to $20, buying our bit board, all these, a couple accessories, oh yes. But you, you write the, then you have to write the, I mean, you get to write the code yourself. Hmm. Or use the Oh, how the many box. how many minutes of code would that be, Pete? Would it be an hour of code? Well, it's got, there's a lot of code just for the clock. The clock takes a lot of code, yeah. But uh, here's, here's, once you have, and we wrote that code, so once you have the clock, you just add this uh, little bit. Oop. And, you know, it checks to see, hey, is it, is it 17 o'clock, which is 5 o'clock p.m., and, and is it less than 24, which is, you know, like midnight or whatever. So between 5 and midnight, it'll... It'll turn it on. Pin 16, which is the pin we have hooked up to the, the yeah. relay on our board. There you go. Uh, so, yeah, the real-time clock modules are really handy. And again, this is a generic part. Same thing with the seven-segment display. Now, the reason the code for the clock is so intensive is because the clock has a lot of actually a lot of features in here. Date and time are on there, which is really handy. So you can actually make a very functional clock. Um, or the world's like most awkward wristwatch with a... I'm pretty sure if somebody out there has a micro bit like wristwatch kit or project. Um, our, our heater in our warehouse is turning on. It's all good. There we go. Oh, we don't want to freeze. It's <laughs> only 74 in here, Pete. 74 degrees. It's Wisconsin in winter. What are you going to do? But that's another good one to do. And the code for that, we did a nice big write up on how to use a real time clock module just to do lots of different things. Because sometimes it's really handy sometimes to have a very accurate clock for doing projects um, or keeping track of stuff for projects. Like our plant watering system, you can have to water the plant every day at five o'clock yeah. as opposed to using that wonderful moisture sensor, which which is a fun one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's uh, how you could do Christmas lights. The other thing is too, you can make a microbit Christmas out of it. You could add other code to there. You can have it play a song because microbit has a built-in speaker. If you have version two, a built-in speaker, I should say. <clears throat> version 1 does not, which we are currently playing with here. And version 2 just kind of went all out, didn't it, Pete? Like, version 1's older, more successful, like, sibling. Wow. Well, we version, we version 2 went to medical school. <laughs> what are you doing over there? Making projects on 
brick-based things. Yeah. There's, a, there's a project we wrote up. We do document tons of all of it for free on our website. Look at that, written by Pete Prodell. Who is that crazy oh, man? <laughs> so embarrassing. Oh, Pete, you're so embarrassed. You should just scrub that out of future yeah. screenshots. Oh, we have those for free up on our website. And oh, yes, follow us on, on if you're watching us somewhere. So uh, people are watching us. They're probably already following us. There's no way you're probably not. But no, this is a really good one with a relay. I mean, our bit board has one built in. There's a bunch of different ones from Microbit out there that are really handy. Um, the Monk Makes one is what I always like to recommend just because it's fairly inexpensive. Um, and it's you can just alligator clip over to it pretty easily. But there's a ton of Microbit relays. And this is just cheap fairy lights, I think they're called, um, which are all solid core wire, as we noticed. So that's bound to snap sometime. Yeah. But they're, they're nice little... Uh, Little embedded magnet wire things and they're cheap. Um, we're gonna add this to our tree that we add a trailer tree, which is also posted on our Twitter account, um, so that when the tree starts talking to people, um, lights will turn on for like a minute or two. Um, again, that's like a common easy thing to do. Like when X happens, like turn the lights on as well. So, am I forgetting anything in our exactly twelve minutes of code? Um, no, that's Target. a good amount of code. I mean, if we can go fifteen, then it's a quarter hour of code. I think that. But um, yeah, again, very simple. It's just like your, uh, you know, just like you would blink an LED. It's as simple as that to turn on the relay, um, which actually has, I believe, has an LED in it. It's basically an opto. Oh yes. Opto coupler in there, right? We were looking at the data sheets on this the other day. <laughs> uh, literally, the data sheets were like LED inside the yeah, what? It's an opto coupler. It's an opto coupler. Right. Yes, and as we learned. Um, Unlike a mechanical relay which has an electromagnet, which moves a piece of metal. Pete once made a gigantic project with a ton of relays turning on a bunch of uh, AC light bulbs. Yeah. And you see the click, 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 click around the room yeah. as they all did things. Yeah. You're like, it sounded like a paparazzi mob was, was mobbing Pete. Yeah, um, right. Pete, do you know that these LEDs are cool to the touch? I know. I, I touched them, and I'm like, these are cool. Yeah, like the Fonz. To the touch. Hey. Hey. Milwaukee. What are we going to do? We don't have a lot to live in Shirley that. Um, uh, Fonz. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I definitely recommend if you have a microbit with a relay, do something fun with these cheap Christmas lights. If nothing else, go to the dollar store, find these like the day after Christmas or like January 1st or any clearance area. I'm sure you can get these for next nothing. These were $10, I think because they came with these fancy little things on them. That's all they had at Target this morning. Do you think you can get them at the dollar store? Or not? Like, I swear you, ones? I'm pretty sure we'll be able to find some of these at the dollar store yeah. like most of the year. Um, I mean, just that... Amazon's even like five to ten dollars in there yeah. for similar ones without the added jingle jangle of these guys. Yeah, I think the stars cost more than the. That's what you paid for, I think. Probably. Well, they, it's got a built in timer here. This is kind of nice, yeah, the built in timer five aspect. Cents worth of circuitry in there. At, at least several pennies worth. <laughs> um, but I mean, they're pretty nice for what they are for ten dollars as, as an add on. They're not too shabby of a, yeah. of a thing. And there's a bunch of different designs. Yeah. But this is only, by the way, only for DC power projects. If you want to do this for AC projects, because that would be explosive. Yeah. Uh, little relay is not designed for AC power. A low, volt, low voltage. Alternating keep current. It under, keep it under 5 volts. Yes, for that you want to use something different. You can actually you can buy uh, AC um, relays. Those are those are pretty actually again inexpensive to do. You could buy an off-the-shelf like Arduino AC relay, plug it into here one of these guys, one of these pin headers, and actually control your bigger project with that, I guess. Okay. Your house, line of house or apartment or dwelling, igloo, yurt, sh houseboat, all, true. all, all those things, uh, tent. But uh, yeah. you can get those as well, which again, they're really inexpensive for just the little module components. I'm pretty sure I can plug those in with little uh, jumper cables like this. All those little sensors are so cheap to buy because they're just so common. There you go. There's. Yeah, it just has pin headers to plug it into the board. And yeah. You get four here instead of one. They, I mean, yeah, you can find the, the little single ones pretty darn cheap. I think they're included in every one of the like 50 in one sensor packages Amazon has for Arduino for like 20 bucks. Those are really kind of handy. A lot of good things in there. Um, but uh, that's why I have a little built-in DC one on here. Usually for turning on, like, fans, little DC fans or motors. Um, but anywho, so that was it. That's our our almost 20 minutes of code. One third hour of code. <laughs> a slight amount of code. Yeah. Okay. So, and we live-streamed again. It's been a long time, Pete. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Of which we should be doing this again in January. And I start this stuff back, actually doing a couple live yeah. streams a week of projects we've done. We have just had a very, 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 very busy year yeah. here at Brown Dog Gadgets. Um, but we've been making a lot of cool projects we want to show off. Uh, so we have you know several more. We'll actually we'll eventually get to an hour of code. We do three of these at 20 minutes each. We'll have an hour of code. There you go. And the hour of code people will, will be satisfied with us. <laughs> now you guys want to hit that hour of code. Yeah. Nah. But no, microbit's a great thing if you can find one. If you if you can right now, there's there's so many scarcity of parts issues going around out there. Microbit is not immune to it. Um, but the V2 is nice, and you can do some fun stuff with it. Yeah. Whether or not you use our wonderful Bitboard, find that browndoggadgets.com. That's it. All right, we're gonna we're gonna be done here. Thanks for watching. We'll be back uh, eventually. Follow us if you're not already following us, because that's cool. Right. We do post a lot of cool things on Twitter, like the animatronic tree, which we'll be posting as a whole project. Yeah. Like next week, Monday or Tuesday, I believe, is the schedule for that little little fun yeah, project. Get that out. And we still have Christmas stuff going on every day. We've got new projects to blast out there. Uh, plus, I love doing an hour of code and have like 1,800 text messages going. I'm like, <laughs> is something on fire? I don't know. I don't know because we're in the middle of our 20 minutes of code. All right. We're got to get out of here. Yeah, right. Thanks, everybody, for watching us. If you're watching us, happy hour of code. Happy holidays of your choosing. All right.